The Reserve Bank of Australia has cut interest rates again to an all-time low of 0.75%. Their official reasoning is to ward off rising unemployment, which has risen from 4.9% to 5.3% since early 2019, and to stimulate a stalling economy. But of course, another reason for the cuts is to tempt first home buyers and investors into an already bubbly, frothy housing market. So has it paid off? How have these rate cuts affected house prices? Data released from CoreLogic shows us that in September, the Sydney and Melbourne housing markets have shown somewhat of a recovery, increasing 1.7% each. Canberra prices also increased by 1%. However, the Perth, Hobart and Darwin markets are still struggling, with Perth falling 0.8%. If we look at the year-on-year -year change, things don't look so good. Apart from Hobart and Canberra, all other markets have been falling, with Perth and Darwin being the worst performers. And if we look at the change since peak, then pretty much all markets have fallen, except Canberra, which I suppose is currently at peak. Perth and Darwin are certainly the biggest losers. With regard to Perth, due to the legacy of the mining boom, migration has fallen to Western Australia and consequently there's a housing oversupply. Bank West Chief Economist Alan Langford said that "...demographics and population growth trends are overwhelming the benefits of low and stable interest rates, although we are now seeing a little bit of an acceleration." We're now well into our deepest and most prolonged downturn in dwelling construction since at least the early 1980s, and of course that means some of the oversupply has been absorbed by lesser new supply. The demand side's just coming on very gradually. Executive Chairman at BIS Oxford Economics, Robert Meller, also spoke on Perth's rocky housing market. He said, You've got to remember here in Perth, the last real surge in prices was between 2001 and 2007. Prices went up nearly 200%, so it was a phenomenal increase. Prices got to within 10 or 15% of median prices in Sydney. It'll be still some time, I believe, at least another six months, before we'll start to see some improvement in demand in response to the underlying population growth fundamentals, as well as a very attractive interest rate environment. Perth has been so severely oversupplied, you sort of just gotta let it run out. It takes a while to self-correct, basically. Director at Joyce Property Investments and Deputy President of the Real Estate Institute of WA, Lisa Joyce, commented on the key drivers of the Perth property market. The cost of finance, affordability, job growth and population growth. Unless we see all four of those drivers in play at one point in time, we really don't see great growth in demand. The timing and the extent of the next growth in the property cycle will ultimately be determined by population growth. We really need to see migration, people, population growth for us to start to see any pressure on the supply of housing. So is there any solution to the Perth property market crisis? Mr Meller suggests that some government stimulus might be needed. In two years' time, if there's no signs of recovery happening in residential construction, I would say that might be a time where governments have got a job to do in terms of providing some stimulus. We'll need to see a further pickup in mining investment that'll start to encourage stronger population growth into the state, and I believe that over the next two years, we'll start to see that. But will there be a quick recovery? I would say, unlikely. Anyway, thank you for watching my video. I certainly do appreciate any views and subscribers to this channel. I know my channel is a bit of a mixed bag, but I guess I'm a bit of a mixed bag, much like the flailing property market in Australia. We have the eastern metropolises of Sydney and Melbourne showing somewhat of a recovery, and then we have Perth and Darwin doing the opposite. The property market in Australia is certainly a two-speed one. Thanks for watching.